गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज सचिन एंड टुडे आई एम इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू विद अनदर नॉवल द नेम ऑफ द नॉवल इज क्राई द पीकॉक राइट क्राई द पीकॉक वेल इट इज द नॉवल फर्स्ट नॉवल इन फैक्ट बाय द राइटर अनीता देसाई and this novel was published in 1963 so we'll be dealing with the brief summary of this novel cry the peacock the main protagonist in this story is a lady she is a married lady by the name maya i hope you understand and you will understand the coming story of this novel so let's move forward अनीता देसाई वेल अनीता देसाई इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फेमस इंडियन इंग्लिश नॉवलिस्ट राइट शी हैज डेल्ट फ्रीक्वेंटली विद द फीमेल प्रोटैगोनिस्ट एंड हर प्रोटैगोनिस्ट were young also old also rich and poor single married or even widowed anita desai has been shortlisted for the booker's award three times finally she was awarded with the sahitya academy award in 1978 for her novel fire on the mountain she was also awarded with the british guardian prize for the novel the village by the sea moreover she also received a padma bhushan award in 2014 so this is all we have for anita desai in brief so let's continue with the story and go ahead in her first novel cry the peacock that is uh, in 1963 anita portrays the psychic tumult of a young and a sensitive married girl by the name Maya Maya is the daughter of a rich advocate in Lucknow and she is unusual introverted and childlike Maya's mother is already dead and her brother Arjun has gone to America to carve his independent destiny so being alone in the child being alone in the house she gets the most of her father's affection and attention the excessive love makes maya feel that the world is a toy made especially for her set moving according to her tunes so we can say she is a pampered girl under the love and attention affection and all that he, she receives from her father her mother is no more and her brother has already migrated to america moving forward Maya is haunted by a childhood prophecy of a fatal disaster that was foretold to her and her father by an astrologer and that prophecy says that in the fourth year of her marriage either she or her husband will die Maya 
who has always lived a careful life a carefree life under the indulgent attentions of her father desires to have the similar attention from her husband as well well the name of her husband is gautam and he is a very busy and prosperous lawyer he is too much engrossed in his affairs so he fails to meet her demands and hence she always feel neglected so this is the situation of maya after her marriage with gautam a busy and a prosperous lawyer moving forward he warns her of her turning neurotic and blames her father for spoiling her however the reason for her neurosis is not her father fixation but it only aids to hasten her tragedy the terrifying words of the prediction ring in her ears and as the time passes she comes to reflect them more intensely on the meaning of life instead of being content to live her remaining days to the fullest and she begins to demand more time and comes to savor life all the more moving forward as gautam fails to satisfy her intense longing for love and life maya is left to the solitude and silence of the house which prey on her the loving attention of her father makes maya oblivious of the deadly shadow maya has a romantic love for the beautiful the colorful and the sensuous whereas gautam is not romantic and he has no use for these flowers the gap of communication between the two leaves maya lonely to brood over the morbid thoughts of the astrologer's prophecy so now she is all alone psychologically moving forward she muses over his lack of love for her maya is always demanding love from her husband and there is no compatibility between the two temperamentally it is 4 years of their marriage now so she thinks that now it's the turn either of gautam or she herself her attempts to divert herself by her visits to her friend leela and pom or mrs lal's party or a restaurant and the cabaret all these attempts prove powerless to dispel the creeping terror the visit of gautam's mother and sister neela brings a brief respite to her so their arrival in the house makes her a bit better
now maya enjoys her busy life in their company but once they are gone she finds the house empty and herself all alone with her old horrors and nightmares maya is so much possessed by the vision of the albino astrologer that she recalls his talk about the myth surrounding the peacock's cry listening to the cries of a peacock in the rainy season she realizes that she should never sleep in peace okay moving forward now she is caught in the net of inescapable being intensely in love with life maya turns hysteric over the creeping fear of death she suffers from headaches and even experiences rages of both rebellion and terror as she moves towards insanity she sees the visions of rats snakes lizards creeping and slipping their tongues in and out of their mouths her dark house appears to her like a tomb so now she is fully frustrated moving forward suddenly an idea dawns in her mind and the idea is that since the astrologer had predicted death of either of them then it may be gautama and not she whose life is threatened she transfers her death wish to him and thinks that as he is detached and indifferent to life it will not matter for him if he misses life in her perseverity she is even haunted by the word murder gautam remains so much lost in his work that she finds him oblivious of the dust storm that has raged earlier in the afternoon okay moving ahead when she asks him to accompany her to the house roof to enjoy the cool air there he accompanies her but lost in his own thoughts they walked towards the terraced end maya in a fret of frenzy pushes him over the parapet to pass through an immensity of air down to the very bottom it remains in the end 
for Gautama's mother and sister to take away that insane Maya from the scene of tragedy of the house of her father. Okay, moving forward. So, I hope you understand the story of this novel, Cry the Peacock, being written by Anita Desai. Please subscribe the channel for more. Like and share the video. And in fact, thanks for watching. We will be meeting soon. So it's bye from my side. It's Sachin saying goodbye to all of you. And do read this story on your own.